In this video, you'll see a couple supplies that I use, but all are optional. This is my Cricut Bright Pad. This is instead of a light box, but you can head on over to a window. Um, you'll also see me using Wash and Gone interfacing. This is for embroidery, and I like to use this. I draw my design straight on top of this interfacing and then use it on top of my fabric, as you'll see and then it washes out after I'm finished with it. This is great for fabrics that are maybe dark or very busy that make it hard to see the design that you've traced. So it is my go-to when doing embroidery. So first you're gonna just trace your design onto the interfacing and get it like you like. So now I'm going to take what I just traced and put it on top of the quilt block that I'm working on. This is from my potting table block of the month. If you're interested in checking that out, you can see the link below. I'm going to add on my embroidery hoop and it'll take a little bit of finagling to get it exactly where I want it and get everything tightened. So take your time because it's definitely worth getting the placement correct before you put all this work into your embroidery. Now I would generally suggest using four strands of your embroidery floss. In this video I'm actually using six because the fabric that I'm working on is so deep and so busy and I really want to make sure that these words are seen and nice and clear. So you'll see me using a full st six strands. Uh, generally I suggest four or three. So I will thread my needle here and create a small knot. And all you do is, I like to lick my finger first, I know that's kind of gross, and then I hold it, wrap around one time, and twirl. And then that makes a tidy little knot. If it's not so tidy, trim it up, okay, so and you should be ready to go. We're gonna start on E, because that's the easiest letter to start on. So we're gonna come up through our fabric. We're going to pull tight and I'm going to go right back down next to it. And you're going to not pull it tight, you're going to leave a little loop. You're going to come up one stitch length away. And as you come up, you're going to go through the loop. Now you will pull tight and you have your first little chain. So now that you're started, you're gonna go back down through the hole you just made. So you're going through that loop, back down through the hole, and you're gonna poke up a stitch away. So holding this thread out of the way, looping around, and pulling tight. This way you're not going up and down and up and down with your needle. So down through the loop and the hole you just made and up one stitch length away, loop around and pull. So down where you came from, up one stitch, loop and pull. from where we came, up one stitch, loop, and pull. So we're going to do this around all the letters until we've finished, and then when we're done we'll finish with a little knot. But it's a very quick stitch and it really is effective in creating thicker lines so that you don't have to use a satin stitch. I also think it fits the style of this quilt quite well. A little grungy, a little bit cute, but I think it works. So I'm gonna speed this up so you can see me getting to the end of the E, and I'll show you how to finish this knot. So 
So once you get to the end, you're gonna land on top. I want you to go past the loop that you made, just like right just past it so you're hooking in that loop, and then go down into your fabric. All right, so you just effectively locked that loop in. I'm gonna turn everything over and go in through your last stitch. Go all the way through, just leaving a little loop. And loop around just your needle three times. Pull tight. And you have a nice little knot. And there we have our E. So now that I've finished my piece, I'm just going to unhoop it and trim off the extra interfacing. Just be really careful not to cut your fabric here. The goal is just to get off the extra uh, and it's not even completely necessary. If you don't have much excess, that's fine. Just leave it and you can submerge it in a bowl of water or run it under warm running water um, and then you just give it some time to get wet and gently, gently rub and peel off the interfacing. It'll get a little goopy at first, but the longer that it's submerged, the more it will come off. And then you're just gonna let it dry and move on with your project. If you would like to see more videos like this, you can check them out at www.rachelrossi.design stitches. And if you'd like to see the quilts that I use this stitch in, make sure to visit that site as well and you'll see all of the quilts that use embroidery. Thanks so much for watching.